Okay, this is the start of our new physics topic on energy. And the first concept we're going to look at is just thinking about what is energy in general. So looking at all these pictures here, we can see that energy is being used in some way. But when we say energy, what we technically mean is energy is the ability to do some work. The ability to do some work. And in science, work means something a little bit different to when we say it in everyday life. It doesn't just mean going to a job. Technically, work means to move or change an object in some way. To move or change an object. So in all of these situations, we can see that energy is being used to move or change something. Whether you're kicking a soccer ball, or you're pressing the keys down on the piano to make noise, or you're pushing the ground to make the skateboard move along, or if you're turning a light on. There's always a change going on, and that's evidence that energy is being used. And actually, energy it is linked to forces as well, which we learnt about last year. Because a force is the way that energy causes work to happen. And we can use a little diagram here to help us see that. We have energy, and that might be the energy of your arm moving. while you're holding onto a tennis ball. And then we know that if you keep your arm moving and move it fast, that's going to cause work to happen. And that work is going to be that the ball that you're holding will be thrown. So the ball moves. But the way that that work happened was caused by a force. And remembering back to our forces, if you're touching, if one object touches another and pushes on it, that's called a contact force. And the contact force was a push. So energy makes things happen. It does work by using forces. So all three of these ideas are connected. The next idea to think about is that energy is important for all living things. And actually it's vital. Every living thing needs energy in some way. Whether it's food, every animal needs food to survive. So whenever we eat, we're getting the energy from food and using it to power our bodies. Or whether it's humans who need fuels now in our society because we rely so much on transport. Fuels for transport. So we need the energy in petrol and diesel to transport all our vehicles. The last idea to think about is, how do we actually measure energy? And just like other concepts in science, like measuring liquids in litres or measuring distance in kilometres, energy has a unit that we measure it in, and it's called joules. So energy is measured in joules. And the symbol for joules is a capital J. Just like the symbol for kilometers is km. And to try and imagine how much one joule is, because we're not really used to measuring energy in everyday life, 
one joule, it takes a joule of energy to lift one kilogram 10 centimetres off the ground. So one joule equals the energy to lift one kilogram, any object that weighs a kilogram, 10 centimetres up or off the ground. And one kilogram is about, well, it's exactly one litre. So if you picture a litre water bottle, if you lift up your drink bottle 10 centimetres, you've used one joule of energy. But foods also contain energy, as I mentioned before, and they actually contain lots of energy. So in a burger here, an average burger contains about 2 million 300,000 joules in a burger. So when we eat food, we are getting lots of energy to power our bodies. And just like with other units in the metric system, like meters and liters, if you have a large number, we can use a different unit and put a kilo in front of it. So we can measure kilojoules and one kilojoule, kilo means a thousand, one kilojoule is a thousand joules. So if we want to simplify this number here, 2,300,000, we know that there are a thousand joules for every kilojoule. So we divide by a thousand, there must be 2,300 kilojoules of energy in that burger.